So we're going to talk today about how to become an influencer on Instagram and get paid. But before that, we have to ask, how is this your first YouTube video? I just never did it. I would like make videos on my uh, desktop and I'd be like, this is horrible and I would delete it. I happen to know there's something you could Google and I won't give it away in YouTube to pull up some YouTube videos. Oh. But I'm getting the stink eye, so we won't cover that. Wow. We're going to leave. <laughs> oh, that's it. It's from another life. How many lives have you had? I've had enough. I've had enough. But that's not what we're here to talk about. Let's talk about your next life, which is, thank you, which is how to be an Instagram influencer, how to be an influencer. And get paid. And get paid. And why do we know about this? You're the expert at being an influencer and getting paid. So I would ask you that. Why are people asking themselves this question? I think they're seeing all the, they're on social media already and they're seeing that people are making money. They and think. I think that's an obvious curiosity, like, wait. And of course, so newbies, it almost looks easy because it's just content and they're thinking, well, I could do that. So I think there's an allure to like, mm. I could do that and I can make money. Yeah. Obviously, once you start getting going, you notice, you realize there's a lot more to it than that. Oh. But I think that's that initial like, you mm. know jump start that gets them going well in you know we're seeing studies now i'm sure a lot of you have seen these studies where the number one desired career is content creator and mr beast blew this up twitch blew this up obviously TikTok, and everyone wants to and i think you're right i think there's a perception of ease and before we even get into talking about okay what are the basics of getting started as an influencer and then what are, you know, the basics of becoming an influencer on Instagram and then getting paid, which is like, there's a lot of topic there. Yeah. And we might have to cut this, you know, up a little bit and, and segment it. But um, what is the deception of that? Like when they think, man, that looks really easy to, if I could just be me and create content, what have you found is the challenge people actually run into when it comes to how easy content is? Like yeah, what? I think the first hurdle is when they realize that they have to figure out what they actually want to talk about and who mm. they are. That's that first hangout mm. because it's like, it's, I mean, sure, you post about your life, but like, as soon as we get on a coaching call, it's like, cool, what do you want to have in your bio? What do you want to talk about? And then there's kind of like mm -hmm. crickets a little bit when it gets to that point. Mm. And, and so you asked a good question. Why are we qualified to talk about this? How long mm -hmm. have you been doing Hot Mod Influencer Agency and Influencer Marketing? Mm -hmm. So uh, let's take it back a little bit further. Mm -hmm. So I've been Just... doing marketing for 10 years. Mm -hmm. And I've owned social media marketing agencies. Mm -hmm. And then I've run digital marketing departments mm -hmm. where I managed influencer budgets. And that mm -hmm. was probably about five years ago now. Mm -hmm. And so then I decided to open up my own agency and help influencers and businesses. And so for the past four years, mm -hmm. I've been solely focused on building building the agency and coaching and talked and helped hundreds of influencers at this point and, and it, businesses. And it is hundreds of the last four mm -hmm. months-ish, five months now that we've actually been proactively working together. I've probably watched you do a hundred plus, maybe 150 mm -hmm. coaching, different coachings. And work, like in-person <clears throat> workshops. We have a pretty good local mm -hmm. group and of then we've creators. Then we've interviewed Interview, yeah. on Hotspark Show. And then I myself, I've been a coach, a small business coach, a performance coach. Now, 18, 19 years, my shows, I have a variety of shows that go back. My interviews go back, like you were saying, on YouTube. So you probably have thousands. I have thousands of people that I've coached. And when, why am I qualified to, to speak into this? Because what I'm finding about influencers, it's actually quite similar, if not identical, right. to the problem that entrepreneurs in general are having that anyone dealing with imposter syndrome is having. And then even if someone overcomes imposter syndrome, once they get into the, the hot seat that they have to create content, they realize, like you said, they don't know what to talk about. And in not knowing what to talk mm -hmm. about, what they really don't know is themselves. Right. Like, I don't even know what- Hugh Grant. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> and so that's the stuff I, I've been doing, personal development coaching, sales coaching, small business coaching mm -hmm. for years. And I'm finding that there's just so many parallels. And so, I, I, so I'm excited that we're I'm working. I'm excited that, you, that we're a team now and that you- can get like you can help them so much more in like mm -hmm. other ways it's fun like i know i help them but like you bring this whole another level of mm -hmm. personal development which is like a lot of the work well and i appreciate that and what i've noticed is when we get into a coaching call you'll be coaching someone and they'll be asking practical questions you have a lot of pragmatic answers from mm -hmm. your vast experience 
And then there's this moment where they're kind of asking the same question and then you look at them and they look at you and it's, didn't we just answer this? And the truth is when I've encountered that in personal development coaching mm -hmm. is they don't know how to word the actual pain that they're experiencing. Mm -hmm. So they're asking the same question over and over again. Right. And so we keep answering practical questions, right. but they're having like existential questions like, and we're seeing this in Influencer Academy. You know, we have a realtor who's been posting her pillars of content and she is a brilliant woman. She's mm -hmm. a mother. She's a powerful local real estate agent. Mm -hmm. And she has her own investment properties and she was trying to put together her profile and it was like existential crisis. Which yeah. one do I want to be? We all encounter that. And we so do. I'm excited. And we, we were just talking about our own bios this morning because yeah. <laughs> we've developed like the Influencer Academy and like we have our agency and we have the Hotspur show. Mm -hmm. So I we go back and like mm -hmm. this is just this community and this has given us, I guess, insight or not even insight, but just it re keeps you in the bubble. Yeah of yeah. constantly evolving and creating. Yeah. And so we're doing it ourselves. Yeah, man. So let's go into how to become an influencer and and then specifically an influencer in Instagram. So the starting point of becoming an influencer, mm -hmm. is the starting point the same for all platforms? Or is the starting point different for someone trying to become a YouTube influencer versus a TikTok influencer? Or does it all have the same starting point? I think there's some fundamental steps to mm -hmm. take. Mm -hmm. And that there might be some different strategies, like mm -hmm. we know for TikTok versus Instagram. Mm -hmm. But since we're talking about Instagram today, I think we'll take that approach. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then you could take those fundamentals and use them for setting up other mm -hmm. profiles on different platforms. But mm -hmm. the little things that I say work on Instagram might not work in TikTok. I mean, mm -hmm. like it's pretty, I mean, mm -hmm. pretty noticeable the, the difference of content, don't you think? Uh, it's very noticeable, the difference in content. So what are the initial three to five steps someone needs to get started as an influencer? Well, I think the very first thing you need to know is what you want to talk about. Mm -hmm. And so you can call it niche, but I think in the beginning when you're really trying to figure out who you are, that I wouldn't get too obsessed about niche. Mm -hmm. I would just know the one thing that you definitely want to talk about. And if it's family, run with that. If it's you know, reviews, you run with that. So I think mm -hmm. number one's that. Number two, getting your profile picture set up mm -hmm. and making sure it's quality, creating a bio or updating your bio to reflect what you want to talk about and then start posting every single day mm -hmm. and then talking in stories to start connecting with your community. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I know that seems a lot simpler than it's, you know, like I'm yeah. making it sound simple, but so quick question. Point number one is obvious. Know what you want to talk about. Mm -hmm. And I, I say it's obvious. Right. But it will be the hardest one for you to solve. Yeah. The second one you mentioned was the profile pic. Mm -hmm. What are some high level points about the profile pic mm -hmm. that they need to keep in mind? It needs to be a high quality photo and it needs mm -hmm. to be either just you and a really great face picture, maybe from the torso up. Mm -hmm. If it's a family account, if you have five kids and you, it starts to make the picture look really small mm -hmm. and it's hard to see it. Mm -hmm. So it might just be better to have a solo picture mm -hmm. again, mm -hmm. right? Instead of trying to cram a bunch of things in a little tiny profile picture. Yeah. So just something high quality and great, like easy to see, no dark colors, bright. You know, even if there's like a filter over it, there's something that's like good, easy quality. And I recommend whenever possible... Knowing your brand and brand colors is something you didn't mention, but mm -hmm. it, it, it wasn't the top three to five, but it's helpful. And when you know that, go into Canva, knock out the background and replace it with a solid color. That's your brand color. Your face needs to be your profile picture versus a logo, unless you are starting a business account or like some kind of specific service. I feel like... In the beginning, you have to come forward, face forward. I get where you're going because yeah. we have several clients like Venturesome Couple yeah. and Nuclear Nomads, and they've been on the road as RV influencers for a while, mm -hmm. and they kind of now have, whether it's a following or a tribe in Venturesome Couple's case, yeah. they, are, they do have a budding brand, and they do have a logo, and I wish both of them would simplify their logos, but the thing about logos, if you've been around long enough to have crafted a logo, mm -hmm. you're married to it, yeah, and you just love you it. Do. So I like your advice. If you are just starting out, please start with a clear headshot. And yeah, I was right. going to say headshot. I'm like, that sounds like such an old school term, no. but it's the truth. And it should be something fun and indicative of your personality and like what you're bringing to your account.
but also don't overthink it. Just get it done. Right. I was, it so done. I told Crystal yesterday, it was like, do a selfie, set up a tripod just and just smile done. and be okay with it. It was anything was better than the yeah. all blue thing she had going on. So one of the items you mentioned was you're basically the bio. And the next most important thing, we were just auditing two today with some of the Influencer Academy members. What are some high level points you have about bios? What <laughs> you should do is have like clear cut keywords about what you're doing, who you are, how you help. And hopefully at some point you have a call to action, which can lead to a website or a form or some kind of um, info product. But in the beginning, we know that you don't necessarily, you're not equipped with all that, but it should be stuff that you really love to do, but also how you help your follower in some way. Mm -hmm. And so that's not all about you. I know it feels like that should all be about you because it's a bio, but there should be at least one sentence that says, I help moms, you know, cook on a budget or something along yeah. those lines. It's why should they follow you? Here's mm -hmm. why. Everyone has a tendency to go, oh, I get it. I need to tell them how I serve them. Great. So then they go, I help you become the best soccer player in the world. And it's like, no, you're assuming that everyone's your client and anyone who lands here is your client. And that's not true either. You have to nail that niche down. We help influencers get paid and grow their income. That's what we do. Right. On my personal profile, I help entrepreneurs grow. And, mm -hmm. and so, like, you got to narrow that down because you do want the wrong potential clients to skim through your account and go, that's not me. Right. You want to repel a certain amount of people just as much as you want to attract right. people. Because you want a lot of people to come to your account to get educated or entertained, but you will have a core community. Yeah. And that's, what, and that's who you're looking for. Yeah. And then talk to us about calls to action real mm -hmm. quick and our current dilemma or debate, our current debate about one link or multiple links. Yeah, we've been going back and forth about this because <laughs> in the Influencer Academy, we're coaching so many influencers and we're doing bio audits and we're seeing that the, you know, the link is ha like when they click on it, they now Instagram lets you have two links. Mm -hmm. And we feel like, man, that's like already giving people too many options, mm -hmm. right? And so we're like, all right, just pick one link and then it's going to a link tree. Mm -hmm. And then the link tree is like a million. Or long. Another 10 decisions. Right. And then when we're working with creators, we're also noticing that in their link tree, they don't even have a button for brands to reach out to them. Mm -hmm. Try to choose one, even if it does go to a link tree. Mm -hmm. And if you're trying to work with brands, make sure that top Real estate says work with me or brand collabs, mm -hmm. start here or something and then have like a form or a website or, you know, something mm -hmm. attached where brands can easily reach out to you. And mm -hmm. I know what you're going to say I can put my email in my bio. I, there's a contact button. But a lot of like marketers work from a desktop at an office yeah. and they're on Instagram on their desktop. So like the contact button isn't there. Yeah. They want to just hurry up That's and right. copy and paste or just fill out a form. Mm -hmm. They don't want to have to deal with going on their mobile to find it. So make it as easy as possible, even if that means having four different ways to reach out to you. Who cares? That's going to help you even mm -hmm. more. Well, and this is where entrepreneurialism in general mm -hmm. bridges. And that is, is know your client. And in the world of paid collabs, it could be the average millennial or Gen Z or Gen Alpha who just got hired mm -hmm. as social media management. They know that they're looking at their phone, mm -hmm. most likely sourcing through this. But there's just as many, if not more, mm -hmm. people in their 30s, 40s, and 50s that are working from a desktop computer. And, you know, you just assume, well, my contact is right there. My email is right there. Right. Only on mobile. Only on mobile. Yeah. They might be using third-party services to source your stuff, but most likely they're using desktop. So whether it's in the bio that has your email mm -hmm. or whether the link itself goes to a single place, the current debate we're having is, in my opinion, you should have a single link because on mobile and on desktop, if you have a single link and you click it, it literally just goes to that and browses to that link. But right. if you have more than one link, it opens up a pop-up. And anytime you give them another decision to mm -hmm. make, you decrease the chances that they want to do business yeah. with you. Yeah. And I, so that's I a current that. dilemma. All right. One of the elements that you really have to pay attention to is your grid. Yeah. So what do they need to know about priming their grid? We want you to post every day, mm. you know, and we won't say multiple times a day because I feel like that's a lot to throw on somebody, mm -hmm. even though truly you do want to have mm -hmm. multiple times that you're touching base on your social media, like up to three or four times, morning, noon, night jumping into stories daily and posting every day. Mm -hmm. But like, that's the reality of it. If you want growth and you have to know what it takes to grow, and that means that you are consistent and you're pumping out a lot of content. And so like, here's the harsh reality. You do really do need to post every day and, mm -hmm. and at least. Getting paid is the final step. And getting paid is big. 
what we're finding is getting paid is not just collabs. Getting paid is a variety of things. You, you don't just get paid with paid collabs. You can get paid with communities you build. You get paid with info products. You can get paid for appearances. Um, obviously, you want to do a lot of deliverables. And I don't want you to get hung up on any particular way to get paid. And so maybe we should do a whole other dedicated video mm -hmm. on that. But what are the basics of getting paid as an influencer? I would say step one is understanding you have value as soon as you start posting and building an audience. What we see is like influencers, content creators start limiting themselves from mm -hmm. the very beginning. Like, oh, I can't get paid till this many followers or this and that. But it's it's best to understand that as soon as you start getting followers and you're talking to them and engaging with them, that you have value to offer any brand because mm. brands have a portfolio that they're trying to build out with their budget. So mm. they really do have room for nano and micro influencers all the way to macro mm. and they need you. So just understand you have value from the very, very beginning. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And that doesn't necessarily mean you have, you should expect to say, hey, I've got one video up and 50 followers and my <laughs> deliverable set <laughs> yeah, I guess is 5K. Good. And right. it's like, I mean, that's great. I mean, you might be a come up, you know, on the come up. Yeah. There, but, um, you know, there's being okay with trade deals, being okay with the language. I would say a few things is understanding the contracts of okay. getting paid. Yeah. I mean, we're talking about the basics of getting paid. If you could understand the contract and even read the terminologies, then you know kind of what the uh, levers are for a negotiation to get paid. You know, so the questions we get are, what should I charge? What should I deliver? And then how to have this discussion. And we're finding that most influencers just thought about the content and the audience and the cold calls. And then after that, they lose the deal because they can't talk about yeah. the contract, the deliverables and the, the price. They don't really know what to do there. Yeah. So how do they solve some of that? Like, Well, it's going into influencer to entrepreneur, influencer to business owner. Mm. And like we have our Cash Collabs Toolkit which are the tools that help you set up your business as an influencer. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. you're, Grant's right, like, yay, like let's start getting paid, but how do you get paid? You need an invoice, you need a, mm -hmm. a, a business contract, an influencer contract. Mm -hmm. uh, you need some of these like standard business tools so that you can set yourself up for success and mm -hmm. control more of the uh, negotiations and, and navigate your own business. Yeah. So I think first things first, know you have value, but two, set your, your business up. So you mm -hmm. go into it feeling like mm -hmm. you're, you know, you know what's going on and you're treating it like a business from the day one. Yeah. 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 And then being comfortable with cold DMs and cold outreaches and yeah. cold sales, because in the end, even the experienced creators that we work with, I mean, with to the tune of 50 to 100,000 followers, they're still very uncomfortable with cold DMs. So almost a million followers. One of them with a million yeah. followers. One of them who has a phenomenal pillar of content. And you know what? Shout out to Florida Bushman. Yeah. And go check out Florida Bushman. He's got a huge platform. Mm -hmm. 244 on Instagram, another 246 on YouTube, and then two Facebook accounts, each with 300,000 and 450,000. A huge platform and still just learning how to cold DM and close mm -hmm. deals. And so being comfortable with those outreaches, those DMs, but how to also walk a deal through. So yes, if you're a young buck, you got a lot of young energy and you're bold, let's say you're confident. Mm -hmm. And that's great. That's a missing element in a lot of creators. So you're one step ahead, but you'll lose a deal being cocky and not knowing the lingo mm -hmm. of a sales negotiation. Well, that brings me to influencerterms.com. <laughs> Boom. Influencer terms that basically it all comes down to educating yourself about <laughs> mm -hmm. the business side of influencer That's marketing good. and like yeah. getting familiar with all of the like being able to talk shop with the best of them. Yeah. Yeah. That's a really good shout out. Influencerterms.com. We put that together for you for free. Download that stinking thing yeah. and and start learning the terminology. So that's a great starting point. Yeah. Any parting thoughts for these people on how to get started as an influencer on Instagram? And get paid. Absolutely. I, I think that the, there's never been a better time that there's room for everyone. Room and for Instagram is a great platform to start on because you can really get creative and there's so many trends to follow. And there's it's I think it's easy to make community mm. once you start talking about something that other people relate to. And so I I would say to just go ahead and get started and start experimenting and seeing mm -hmm. what works for you and have fun with it. Have fun with it. I, and if I had any parting thoughts, treat this like a business. Just because mm -hmm. it's content creation, social media, or influencer work does not mean it's, what's the word, timeout? Does not mean it's, what's it mean when you, when the rules don't apply to you? Just not disqualified. 
don't think that the rules don't apply. The rules of business don't apply. You have mm -hmm. to know what you're doing. You have to know your client, know mm -hmm. your customer. You have to be intimately aware yeah. with their needs. You're going to have to produce what you say you produce, which is content. And then you're going to have to know sales and negotiations. Yes. And so over, and then over the long term, and this won't happen right away, you have to build brands. You have to have a distinct, you have to have a distinct brand. Now that will help you because if it's really tough to source deals now, three years from now, when you have a strong brand, it's going to be easy. Yeah. And you might not even be doing a lot of content. So brand is a long-term play, but you got to be playing the short, medium, and long-term game. And so treating it like a business, understanding your industry, understanding your niche, and going at it at a volume. Because a lot of people talk about quality content, but I'm on the, I'm on the, the bus that says you don't know quality until you've done quantity. That's why we are saying post every day, every day. If, if you can do multiple times a day because you're really just trying getting better at becoming a content creator. You're experimenting mm -hmm. more with the editing suites and mm -hmm. tools and you really can't get there unless you're posting and just, you know, figuring mm -hmm. out what your audience likes and what you like. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, thank you so much. I hope you learned something today. Check us out at theinfluenceracademy.com where we answer all these questions, put thank the you. tools in your hand and give you the success path, which is our preeminent course on how you can get paid collabs in 30 days. And we'll see you next time at the, this isn't the Hot Spark Show. We'll no. see you next time. Influencer Academy. Oh, here we go. Yeah. Oh, here we go. Here you go. We'll see you next time. But remember, good, <laughs> I got to cut all that. Yeah. Remember, good influencers doing good content, getting good pay will create a great world. Mm, great world. Do you like great world? A better world. We'll do great things. Great things. Okay. So. <laughs> No matter what you do, remember, good influencers. Make good content. No? No. Make, Who make? Making good content. Okay. Making okay, good content. Okay. okay. Good influencers. Making good content. Making good money. Yeah. And our, uh, what's the last one? Do good in the world? Make great things. We'll be do. we'll do great things. We'll do great things. Okay. Three, two. Oh, but the rooster will no, think no, over again. Okay. One, two, three. Do great things. Okay, one more time so I'm not deadpan. Okay, I was just listening. Okay, here we go. Three, two. Do great things in the world. Sure. No, it's not. I've got all the content. We have to, we have to do the whole thing again. Okay. Three, or I can't be real about it. Well, okay. Three, two, one. And remember, good influencers. <laughs> making good content. Making good money can do great things in the world. Check us out at theinfluenceracademy.com. That's good. I like that. Yeah, I like good. that take.